there's a sense in which Socinianism represents a kind of the ultimate form of Protestantism on this level. Uh, that actually, you probably need to Even nuance protesting that a bit. orthodoxy, I guess. Yeah, yeah I mean, by and large, Socinianism is is often regarded as falling into two broad but not mutually exclusive camps. Uh, on the continent, you tend to have a form of Socinianism that that emphasizes human reason as the ultimate criterion for judging what is and is not true or what can and cannot be true. In England, uh, you tend to have a form of Socinianism that operates with a a simple biblicist literal hermeneutic. So if God walked in the garden, he must have a body. Uh, if God repents, therefore he must change. What they both have in common is, uh, I don't want to sound too positive about the Sassinians, but one would have to say, if you're going to give them good marks, what are they doing? What, what are they at least trying to do well? They're trying to take scripture seriously. Mm -hmm. They have this strong emphasis upon scripture alone. The problem is that leads them into yeah. very problematic territory regarding sort of metaphysics and regarding hermeneutics. And, and that's really where the Sassinians, uh, I think, where they find their popular appeal, because they offer a very simple and straightforward reading of some of the more difficult biblical passages, but also where they come undone in that they fail to uh, engage with the the early church fathers and all of the, the careful Trinitarian and incarnational discussion that does address many of the textual scriptural problems they raise, uh, but they have no time for it because it's all exactly. part of the, the fall into Greek philosophy, if you like. 